Hey everybody, my name is Elliot Kimmel. I'm a high school teacher at London Central Secondary and I want to talk to you today about frog dissection. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at the external anatomy of a frog. And we want to ask ourselves a few questions here. So for example, do frogs have ears? So you'll notice here on this image, I've got a frog and you can see the eye. There's a little membrane around the eye called the nictitating membrane. And posterior to the eye, so moving in this direction, is a sort of a fold of skin, specialized skin. This is called the tympanum. And this is the part of the of the frog that detects sound waves. So this essentially acts as an eardrum. Um, the other thing you want to do, you know, before you actually get into cutting the frog open and dissecting it, is to have a definite look at the external anatomy, including the, the eye and the tympanum, and look at the external nares here, sort of the nostrils bringing air into the mouth. And you can see right here, this is the location of those nares as well as they, as they come into the mouth region here. Um, an interesting thing about the tongue of a frog is that it attaches to the front of the mouth, so that's the way it can, you know, project the project the tongue out really far to capture the insects. Um, so in order to do this, of course, you're going to have to open the mouth of the frog. So down here, open the mouth, have a look at the tongue, have a look at the external and the internal nares, and also the question is, do frogs have teeth? So you're going to want to sort of feel the jaw here and feel the lower jaw there to see if frogs have teeth. Um, also, you can look at the, the feet and look at whether or not the, the fore or the hind legs are webbed or not. All right, so it's time for our actual incisions. Uh, you're going to be making a mid-ventral incision, so laying the frog um, on its back in the dissection tray here. So the back is the dorsal side. This region here, the belly region, that's called the ventral side of the frog. And you're going to be making an incision up the middle, so that's why it's called a mid ventral incision. Um, I want to suggest to you that the best way to do this is without any pins. Don't put any pins in the fore legs or the hind legs because as you move the frog around and make the cuts, there's a chance that the pins are going to come out. So make sure you're wearing your safety glasses, your gloves, and you're ready to go. So here you can see we're making a medial incision just through the skin, um, inserting the sharp end of these very fine scissors down here in the pelvic region and cutting upwards like this, all right, making shallow cuts just below the skin. Uh, you can see in this image here, the student is using forceps to sort of grab the skin so that that incision can be made. And in this image, the skin has been partially cut up to here and then down here under the arm and over the leg there at the hip region and the skin has been, has been pinned down. Then they're going to repeat the same thing on the other side and pin the skin down as well. First look inside. Now this is what it's going to look like when you open up your frog and you pin down. This is the skin right here and this is the muscle layer. All right, so this pin is in the muscle layer and the skin is in behind. When you first open your frog, um, assuming that it's not a female with a bunch of eggs, and in which case if it is, uh, you could see a huge mass of eggs, which makes it very difficult to dissect anything underneath that. And if you do have that, then a suggestion is to basically just pick those eggs out with your fingers at the sink and get rid of those eggs so that you can see the other stuff. But this is basically what you're going to see. The largest internal organ has multiple lobes, and that is the liver. Look at how big that liver is. And these are the different lobes, all right? It's all attached together, but it's, and it's so, you know, it's one organ, and that's the liver. Um, here, we've lifted the liver up so that you can see what's underneath it. We're going to have the stomach here. We'll have a look at that later. And then the small intestine kind of starting around here and curving around and going around and you know at this this student has uh, removed the small intestine and pulled it off to the side and and pinned it down there so you can get a sense of just how long that intestine is there is a large intestine deeper down in there and we'll see if i've got an image for that so once again we have the liver here all of this grayish green thing now this actually is not part of the liver uh, this organ is inferior to the liver towards the dorsal side, towards the back, and that's a lung right there. Um, 
The other thing that you're going to notice very uh, predominantly are all these yellow finger-like things coming out, all right? And these are the fat bodies. They store energy and help to insulate some of the organs. So that's fat body there. All of this is fat body. Uh, you can see some over here and all these little stringy things, fat bodies right there. Okay, so we got a number of images to go through here. Um, Again, this is just with the uh, skin and the muscle pinned back and the major organs. Again, we've got the liver, the multiple lobes of the liver here. We've got the stomach, the J-shaped kind of stomach coming down here. This may be filled with bugs or whatever the frog ate for its last meal. So you can have a look at that if you have, a, if you have the stomach to do that. Um, continuing on, the small intestine curving around here. And here you can actually see the large intestine separating out there. So the large intestine would come down here and then out there. Um, what else we got here? Well, we've got something called a vestigial oviduct. Now, um, the thing about this is that in females, the oviduct, of course, carries the egg uh, from the ovary um, and uh, into the body cavity and then carries those eggs out the, uh, the cloaca or the urogenital opening. Um, they are present in males, but they're not functional. And you can think of a vestigial structure, there are others in humans, things like the appendix, you know, which doesn't have a, have a definite function. Um, the fact that females, of course, have mammary glands, this is in mammals, in humans, and they are functional, they, they produce the milk. Um, but males also have nipples, um, but they're not functioning. So they're vestigial and there's a various other vestigial structures you could study in evolution courses. So just because an oviduct is present, and I'll show you another uh, image of this, it doesn't mean that it's a female. It could be a male, so we'd have to examine further. Let's go over to this image here. We can see the body wall, the muscles. We can see the stomach again coming underneath and then moving into the small intestine somewhere around there. The liver has been lifted up a little bit. This is a probe, which is a great instrument to use during dissection. Um, and of course the small intestine is labeled down there. Let's come down here. Now in order to see the heart, and the heart is visible right here, the heart is in a little sac called the pericardium, but the heart is not initially visible, it's protected. It's up in this region here, it's under the breastbone. So to see that, after you make your cuts and you cut down here, you're gonna to need to use your scissors, is probably the best thing, and cut through the breastbone and then remove some of this material in order to find the heart. And we'll have another uh, look at the heart in a bit. We've got the liver here, we've got the stomach, we've got the small intestine, and once again, you can see the large intestine there where the small intestine ends and the large intestine begins. Um, over here, it looks like we've moved some stuff around, uh, maybe even removed the stomach. We've got the heart again there. Looks like I can see a tiny bit of this organ. Do you think you could recognize that? That's the gallbladder, the liver, small intestine, and the large intestine. Okay, here's another great image of the gallbladder. Um, the, the thing I want to point, point out to you is that the gallbladder is a balloon-like structure. It stores bile that's produced in the liver here, but it's not a thick-walled, um, opaque um, sac, really. It's very translucent, and you can see the bile in there, that greenish-yellow liquid. Here is a lung sticking out. Of course, it's deflated in, in the frog specimen. Um, in a living frog, the lungs inflate, of course, as oxygen and air comes in. Now, we have our first sign of whether or not this is a male or female frog. So what do you say, male or female? Well, if you guessed male, you'd be right. There is a testis here, a bean-shaped yellowish organ attached to the body wall towards the back. All right, so in order to find that, this person has taken the probe. This is a blunt probe, so there's no sharp point on it and pulled back the intestines so that that can be found. Now, you don't have to use a probe. You could use your fingers. That's probably what I would do. But you want to look for a testis on this side, and then you want to push the intestines to the other side, and you want to find the other testis. And often, one is higher than the other, sort of like that. There might be different sizes. And that's how you're really going to tell whether or not you've got a male or a female. Now, if we come over to this slide here, you can see I've labeled vestigial oviduct. This is a coiled tube, very frilly little tube, 
And this, um, you know, my suggestion is that this is going to be a male. I would, of course, look for the presence of testes. I might look at the thumb region there and see if there's a pad-like structure. That helps when the frog is breeding and helps them uh, clasp onto the females as they hug the female from behind and stimulate her to lay, to lay eggs. Um, but that's one of the things I would look for. We've got the liver, we've got the heart here. Let's come down here and we can see on the left side of the frog, you're right, but on the left side, there's another testis. And it uh, looks like I've labeled the other testes, although I'm not overly convinced from this image. It just looks like a flap there, but uh, assume that I got it right and there are two testes, that would make this a male. Of course, the stomach has been lifted up with the forceps here in order to find that. So you really do have to dig around for that kind of thing. Well, here's a definite female. We've got the eggs right here, and of course the eggs are released by the ovaries right into the body cavity of the female. And another thing that you can look for in a mature female is the oviduct here. Now this is different from the vestigial oviduct up here. I mean, look at the diameter of the coils, all right? So this is gonna be a mature female with lots of eggs in the body cavity. Having another look at the heart itself, you can see the heart is in the pericardial cavity here, this baggy-like structure, this, this sac that protects the heart that is filled with some fluid to when the heart beats, it, it reduces the friction. Now the amphibian heart is three-chambered, so we have a four-chambered heart, mammals have a four-chambered heart, amphibians, frogs have three chambers and fish have two. And here you can just make out the ventricle so one ventricle right there and there is an atrium here and there's an other atrium here so normally there are two atria and two ventricles a little hoppy face there but in the frog there's two atria and one ventricle and here i've labeled the atrium here and an atrium would be in that location and a ventricle there um, we can also of course again see the multiple lobes of the liver and in terms of the digestive system, uh, my students always find it interesting to open up the stomach and have a look at the contents. In this case, there's nothing in there, um, but what you can see are these folds that increase the surface area of the stomach and help with the churning of the food. So you can see them there, and this one might be a bit overexposed, but you could also see them in there. Okay, so uh, that was my little introduction to dissection of the frog, and I hope it helps you in your dissections. Um, you can find more science resources on my website, www.zerobio.com. I've got quizzes and games, and I do, of course, have a dissection lab over here. Some of the same pictures of the frog and a few different ones as well. All right, so I hope that helps. See you soon.